In this session, I'll show you short scratch code snippets to illustrate important concepts for the performance task. We will not cover the written response, and please note, sample project code is not available in this video. Let's get started. First thing you need to do to begin your performance task is to familiarize yourself with the scoring rubric. The link to the rubric is in the description. Feel free to follow along. Row one, the video demonstrates the running of the program, including input, program functionality, and output. In Scratch, there are multiple ways to show input. One would be under sensing, and you have the ask and answer pair. Also, most of the blocks under the events category are inputs that trigger things to happen. An output is what happens on the stage that follows the input. Row two includes two program code segments, one that shows how data has been stored in this list or other collection type, one that shows the data in this same list being used as part of fulfilling the program's purpose. So basically it means that you gotta create a list and that list has to be used in a meaningful way. In this program, I'm going to have the user enter prices for three items, which will be stored in a list called shopping items. And I'm going to tally it up. So step number one, let's create a list called shopping items. So go to variables and click on make a list and give it a name, shopping items. And here is the list and all the blocks associated with it. Step two, let's ask the user and get the user's answer or input for the price. And we'll do that using the ask and answer. So go to sensing and ask, how much is it? And wait, then we're going to add the response or the answer to the list one item at a time. So let's go to where all the list related blocks are. So under variables, then here, add something to this list, right? Shopping items. And this is what we need. And instead of a thing, we'll need to grab the user's response or the answer, right? So go to sensing and here is the answer block. Replace thing with answer, make that a little bigger. Then let's ask the question three times so we can add three items to the list. In order to do that, we got to go to events. When flag is clicked, we're going to repeat three times these two blocks. So go to control, grab the repeat block, and instead of 10, replace it with three. And now let's test it. Click on the flag. How much is it? 10. How much is it? five, 15, and the program is done. So every time I entered an answer, it got added to the shopping items list one at a time. Now, if you want to clear your list, you got to do that by going to variables and then delete all of the shopping items. Click and my list is cleared. Now let's add up all items in the shopping items list. Uh, in order to do so, we have to traverse or iterate through the list. So let's go to where all the list blocks are and look for a useful one that will let us access the items in the list. So we'll need to go through the list one at a time. This block right here will let us access item one of shopping items list. So if I change the number here, it's going to refer to the second item, third item, and so on. So let's drag this out. Since there are three items in the list, let's use the repeat block to access the items one at a time. So go to control, repeat, change 10 to three. And let's simply make the cat say each item. So go to looks and then say, and instead of hello, let's replace it with item one of shopping items. And I'll also add a wait block for pauses so you can see this repeating. So go to control, wait one second, pop it right here. Let's test the code. 
How much is it? 10, 5, 15. And the cat says 10, 10, and 10. 10 three times. And that is because we are asking the cat to say item one of the shopping items for two seconds, three times, right? So we gotta be able to update this item number from one to two to three. And in order to do that, we're gonna need a variable to replace one. Let's go to variables and make a variable and call it counter. And next thing we need to do is we got to set the counter to one because we're starting with the first item. So here is the block set counter to and make sure this block is above the loop so that it doesn't reset itself to one every iteration. So right here and set to one. Now, instead of repeating one for every loop, we're going to replace one with counter. So go to the variables category, drag out counter and replace one. And one more step. After saying the item in the list, we have to update the counter by one so we can move on to the next item. So change counter by one should be inserted at the end of the loop right here. And before we test it, let's make sure that whenever the program starts, it wipes out clean the shopping items list. So go to events, when flag clicked, put it on top of delete all of shopping items and let's test it. Flag clicked, how much is it? 10, 50, 100, 10, 50, and 100, yes. So the list traversal is working. Now that we know that it's working, let's go through the list one item at a time and add it all up to show the total price. And we no longer need the save block or the wait block anymore. So I'm going to remove those two and keep item counter of shopping items. And to add up all the prices, we'll need a placeholder that will sum up all items one at a time. Let's create a variable called total price. And we're going to update the total price every iteration of the loop by using this block right here, change. And this time we'll need to choose total price by, and the amount that the total price is gonna change by is item counter of shopping items. Oh, and the order is very important. We gotta make sure that change total price by is above change counter by because we don't want the counter to update as soon as we enter the loop. Let's test it. How much is it? 10, 50, 100. And the total price is 160. So everything is working as intended. One more thing, when the program begins, we gotta reset the total price to zero, right? So set total price to zero. And this shows the list data being added and being used in the program in a meaningful way. Row three, row three has to do with explaining the list that you've created. Row four includes two program code segments, one showing a student developed procedure with at least one parameter that has an effect on the functionality of the procedure. One showing where the student developed procedure is being called. So these are the two code segments that we'll need in the program. And this has to do with my blocks, which is the procedure part of Scratch. When working with procedures, you need two things. One is the function itself and a call to the function. So let's go to my blocks, create a procedure called move forward. And using this block, we're going to move the cat forward. And the procedure also needs at least one parameter. So click on add an input. And this input or the parameter is going to be called 
steps. So here we've just created a block that has a name move forward and we'll take one parameter which will be assigned to steps. Click OK and here it is. So let's make the cat move in the given number of the parameter steps. So go to control, repeat, and move 10 steps. Then replace 10 with the parameter steps. And notice how you can copy the parameter by clicking and dragging it. Now let's call the function. In my blocks, the function call is already created for you. So drag it out and insert your argument. So this is going to be assigned to your parameter steps. So how many steps do you want your cat to move? Let's try three. And we'll need a when flag clicked on the function call. And when the flag is clicked, we're going to call the function move forward. And this three is going to be assigned to steps. And this parameter steps is going to be used in your code to move the cat. All right, click on the flag. And yes, that worked. Now, what will happen if we change move forward to 30? And to demonstrate this, let me pull the cat back a little bit, click on the flag. And it is so much faster because now steps is 30. And this demonstrates a user created procedure that is being called. Row five includes a program code segment of a student developed algorithm that includes sequencing. So that's when you have more than two blocks of code and selection has to do with conditional statements such as if and if else. So these two, and uh, we'll need to add these to the program and iteration has to do with loops. So if you scroll here, you'll see that there's a repeat forever. There's also repeat until. So these are all the loops that you can use in Scratch. Row six describes two calls to the selected procedure identified in written response 3C. So here is the procedure created in 3C. Each call must pass a different argument that causes a different segment of code in the algorithm to execute. Describes the condition being tested by each call to the procedure. Identifies the result of each call. This means that your procedure will need an if else statement that will run different lines of code depending on your parameter value. So for example, we don't want the cat to hit the edge of the wall. So when the steps is too great, we're going to not allow the cat to move. And that number we can decide, well, let's set that as 30. So if greater than 30, the cat is not allowed to move. Else, meaning if steps is less than uh, 31, right? then the cat will be able to move. So we're going to use the if else block to evaluate the steps inside of our move forward procedure. So let's detach, repeat, and grab if and else. And to evaluate the steps, we're going to go to operators and we'll need this. And 30 and less is allowed. So we're going to put 31 on the right side. On the left side, we'll need to evaluate steps. So now if steps is less than 31, then let's move. So put the repeat block back in there. And else, if the steps is too great, we're simply going to say too fast. So say too fast. Now let's insert different values in the function call and see which lines of code will run. So is it going to be the code in the if block or the else block? And we do need to demonstrate different lines of code running. So move forward 29 and let's see what happens. And let me pull the cat back. It moves. Now drag it back to the left side. If we change move forward to 35 perhaps and click on the flag, it says too fast. These function calls don't have to be in your code. Um, they're used as examples for your written response.
So describing it will do the job. So that covers all six rows. Good luck with your performance task.